I, I wonder when you're doing this, you brought up two really important things. You brought up shame and guilt. And I think shame and guilt, deep down, whether you meet someone who seems confident or whether you meet someone who's insecure, shame and guilt are right there, right? Even when someone feels confident or is, is acting confident, often there's a shame and guilt of some part of them they're trying to hide. And if someone's feeling insecure, it's because they shame and guilt themselves. Walk us through a bit about how those two were these bad friends of yours for a while, and then you were eventually able to let them go. I'm just letting them go, especially with stuff with my mom. Um, you know, I just, I think most people idealize this sort of nuclear family, and I just have felt pain and guilt and shame my whole life that that wasn't our story, our, our life experience. Um, it hurts me to know that, like, there is pain there for her, for me. It just destroys me. So I'm I'm working on that um, because I'm like, I'm 47. I can't, I don't mean to be morbid, but I don't want to die carrying this with me. Like, I, I will shift this. It's time. It's been long enough. Yeah. I put enough time in. So I'm working on that with Barry right now, and I'm making some really good strides, and it's really hard, you know? I, I think these things are not easy. I, I felt a lot of guilt and shame around drinking because, like, a lot of my sort of least desirable experiences had probably something to do with me being drunk, mm. you know? <laughs> so I'm like... Amazing that you would keep doing something that like doesn't serve you. Yeah. Um, I felt pain and guilt and shame every time I did feel like I acted in a way that wasn't as gracious and patient as I wish I could always be. Mm -hmm. um, these are really go-to, overly available emotions that I am just like, I can't be nearing 50 and still function like this mm -hmm. so like you know it's like kicking out bad roommates you're yeah. just like guess what you are a sloppy horrible person you have bad energy you're negative you're messy and like I can't live with you anymore mm -hmm. like I want to get my own place <laughs> and keep it tidy <laughs> and Jesus like how have I managed to put up with this for so long yeah it's like, that's how I feel inside my body. Yeah. And shame and guilt are roommates I've had my whole life that I totally resent and, like, wish I could just give an eviction notice to. <laughs> and I'm starting to, like, grow a pair and actually really take charge because I think I know, like, I I'm running out of time. Mm. Like, we don't live forever. And nobody wants to think about death or dying but it's an inevitability that we all share in common and we really don't even know actually when it's coming. So there's a part of me that's just like, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm fatigued. I'm exhausted. I'm desperate to know what the other side of this feels like. You know, we used to love 45 records and always the popular hit song was on the A side. <laughs> and then we would play the B side and be like, this song's actually awesome. Yeah. I'm like, what is the B side of my life? Mm. What is the life that isn't so corroded with self-loathing, guilt, shame, beating up on myself all the time. People are like, you seem so positive. I'm like, you have no idea what I'm mm -hmm. dealing with on the inside. Mm -hmm. It's so hard and heavy some days. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that I do, I am I am glad, is I don't stay stuck and I don't stay yeah, depressed. Yeah, I can tell that. I can, I can hear that in what you're saying and how you're saying it. I'm almost like, no, you got to get over that really <laughs> fast. Don't blame yeah. people for stuff. Don't stay stuck. Get on with it. Get out of bed. Put one foot in front of the other. Start doing dishes. You'll start feeling better, I promise. Like, <laughs> cleaning is a very spiritual act. And yeah. put on a song and, like, all of a sudden you'll be shaking your butt and, yeah. like, moving your body. and like, Or jump in the rain. Or <laughs> yeah, endorphins will start to come. So... I've had these fantasies of being Greta Garbo in my bed and my friends tending to my bedside or talking on the side on the phone like, ooh, we're really worried about her. You know, it just doesn't happen because it's just like I, I just am like, oh, God. Like, except for funny enough with my drinking, my friends did do that. They were right. like, we got to we gotta get in gotta there and be out. honest with her. And that's true friends. 
friends who kick your butt and hold up mirrors to you mm -hmm. or tell you when they don't like what they see or want you to see your reflection and feel good about it. That's true friendship. I'm all in for tough love. So I, I've been, you know, when I was in the institution, when I was 13, they assigned me a therapist, Dr. George Blair, I'll never forget. Um, and they had these groups um, a couple nights a week where they would invite all the families in and they would put someone in the circle and they would talk to their family wow. very openly about what led to this crazy place we were all in. And it wasn't like a rehabilitation center. It was a full-blown like institution. Right. It was very hardcore. Mm -hmm. It was much more one flew over the cuckoo's nest. It wasn't like promises in Malibu. You got it. <laughs> This was like real deal North Valley, like two years of you're locked in there. This is not a place you're allowed to leave. If you try to leave, they will deal with you accordingly, and it's not pretty. So, but what, what they would do is they would have these families sit around in a circle, and they would encourage. Um, there was no force, but it was sort of, you know, it was mandatory. Mm -hmm. They would sit that person down and they would sit them uh, uh, across from their family and then all the families would sit around and they would talk honestly about what led to them being here, what was missing, what wasn't working with their family. There was sort of like, you know, non-aggressive confrontation about like, you know, the parents were just as accountable as the kids. Um, it wow. was incredible. Wow. And it, it shaped my life forever. It wasn't like, you know, we're all performers and we put it all out there. Like, that wasn't what did it. Yeah. I am witnessing when you don't sweep things under the carpet, when you do not let them rot and start to stink, when you are willing to be brave and put it out there and discuss it out in the open it wasn't even in front of others. It was just to find your voice and talk directly to that person. It forever formed me. It's like that was such an important life journey that would color my path for the rest of my life. And weirdly, when I found out this show might actually happen in 2019, I was like not only of someone who's been sitting on the other side of an interview chair my whole life and you kind of get fatigue on those same questions. Like, I was like, what if this could weirdly be a little <laughs> like that group night that we would have a couple yeah. times a week where we just sit in some chairs in a group of people and talk <laughs> and we keep it real. And a lot of it was really funny. People yeah. laughed. It was heart-wrenching. It was emotional. It was humorous. It was insightful. It was raw. And I think I'm really having an aha moment or an epiphany right now because I'm like, am I running this show the way we did in those rooms? <laughs> like, it just was really cool to find out that talking it out and being brave to tell your truths was a good thing. Mm. Those sound like some of the most special skills and tools that every one of us could use so early on. And the fact that you feel you're still using them after all this time it's pretty remarkable. I have not associated the two until this moment. Mm. But I wasn't necessarily getting it from my job growing up. That wasn't as much as it was a like, have all your emotions available. It was very structured in the work. Um, and it was very spontaneous and creative and free, but it was for a purpose. And if anything, you were kind of pretending to be a different person, but like pulling on your real emotions. I had never experienced up until that point anything like it. And I've definitely conducted myself my whole life since I got out of there as if I still go to those group nights. Like, I want to put it out there. I want to I wanna encourage other people to not sit on things, but discuss it, um, be bold, um, and not afraid of what other people are thinking and feeling when they're digesting your sort of deepest stuff. Mm -hmm letting out secrets can be really liberating and I still feel like I have plenty and I'm just now like willing to even look at some like secrets and and being afraid of what people are going to think is is not good it's not good at all what do you think was what made it safe because I feel like that's what it is we think that 
environments need to be loving or they need to be caring, but really it's a sense of safety that we're looking for. What made it feel safe? The truth, the truth and the honesty and the lack of judgment. It, that's what made it safe. That people weren't gonna, nobody alienated each other. No one treated each other less than, we went on business as usual. We felt like we knew each other better. We were in an environment where people literally like, kind of, if you wanted to talk about it, you could. If you didn't, you didn't have to. But like, nobody made each other feel bad. So I think truth and not feeling judged or is is what le leads to safety. Yeah. Um, one of the things that Barry talked to me about, and I'll apply it to this also, is if you're if you're not feeling safe, how can you make yourself feel safe? Mm -hmm. If if you're not getting that from others, how do you make it okay? for you. And I went on a date with this guy. I thought it was the best date. I mean, it really was. It was like so good. And I, we made a plan for that weekend and we were texting back and forth and it was so cute. And I was like, and I really liked him. I was like, what a nice guy. I was attracted to him. I loved his job because he was, you know, um, in the news business and like I love news and I'm like oh my god this is so cool I never heard from him again like I guess that's what you call getting ghosted I, I was like whoa that is so oh wow that's so weird um okay and I was talking to Barry and there's this sex in the city where this boyfriend of hers named Jack Berger um, breaks up with her on a post-it note and it became this pop culture phenomenon yeah, yeah. And the post-it note reads, I'm sorry, I can't, don't hate me. Now, we all took that and ran with it. The line was, "I this cannot be the day I get broken up with on a post-it. So they have this whole crazy adventure. But all of like pop culture and society was like, this is the worst thing ever. I'm like, Barry, that is the most giving Thing that I could ever ask for in modern society, being a single girl. I swear to God, that's, I'm sorry. Okay, great. I can't. Thank you. Now I know where you're at. Mm -hmm. I know to move on. This is so informative that I appreciate the gracefulness and the graciousness of you, like, just telling me there's no there there. Mm -hmm. And don't hate me. Okay, I get it. You're being <laughs> self-effacing. You know this is maybe not kosher, but that's okay because it's your truth. Yeah. You cannot be, we can't be mad at people because they're not what we want them to be. And I was like, I just wish I could get that Jack Burger post-it note, Barry. <laughs> and he goes, well, you can write it to yourself. Yes. And I literally was like, Barry, you just took out all the frustration, anxiety, uncertainty, unfinished business, lack of control, helplessness I feel. I feel good. I feel empowered. I feel like when I got on a bullhorn and share this wisdom, <laughs> maybe this is Which a is start. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, it was the biggest gift I could have gotten. So I think we can apply that to a lot of things. It's like, I'm not feeling safe right now because I just told my truth. Okay, then maybe you can tell yourself mm. why it was a good thing, why you are safe, that there will not be consequences that are unsurvivable that come out of this scenario, and help yourself off the ledge by giving and fulfilling for yourself what we normally just tend to automatically look outward and to others for. I think what you just said right now is not only great for someone who's receiving that type of note, but it's also important for someone who often postpones that note. So we know so many people that are in a relationship that don't want to be in it, but they don't want to be seen as the bad person. So they'll let it stay on for another six months, another 12 months another 18 months. And those people are in a prison. Correct. They're in a horrible jail that they have put themselves in by not dealing with it. 